You're listening to the Colorado Culture and Cuisine Podcast. Today's Lazy Saturday. I'm enjoying a little bit of Westman's Single Malt Whiskey from Rappahannock Pot Distilled, made in Sperryville, Virginia. So it's pretty classy. It's more on, there's a lot more rise in there. Than a lot of different types of uh, single malt um, American whiskeys. It's pretty interesting. I've never really had. I think we had like two or three different um, American single malts. Pretty much everything is blended. Ah, it's just not the right way. So this is how they describe it. The Westman's whiskey combines the best of the grand tradition of single malt whiskey and creative, unique innovations for aging and flavoring that result in a special spirit that has no peer. We start with a special barley, floor malted in the distillery. We dry and flavor the malt in our own kiln with a unique blend of fruit wood and hardwood smoke. It is pot distilled, it is pot stilled in small batches, one barrel at a time. Our methods for chip and barrel aging are a secret. Most of the work is done by hand. The process results in a deep, rich range of finished flavors that is unique. It also happens to obtain optimal maturity much faster. At Copper Fox Distillery, we continue to have a passion for making great whiskey and hope the sensation comes every sip of Westman's whiskey. Please enjoy it responsibly. Rick Westman. And you can check them out at copperfox.biz. I actually got this before I left uh, Virginia. This is a 15-month-old um, whiskey, and oh, Lord geez, it's amazing. So I took a trip from Denver, Colorado to Boulder, Colorado. And my trip, you know, was going to have me take all these highways and this crazy, you have to have like a, like an easy pass or something. That's probably not even the easy pass. They probably have like their own or whatever. I'm like, you know, I'm going to just go on the roads not as traveled. So I went on the back roads to get to Boulder and I had an amazing time. Um, it was just mountains as far as you could see and, you know, clear skies. It was kind of a little bit overcast, um, but it's just a beautiful sight. Something that, you know, you don't get in the city here in Denver. It's just buildings upon buildings, you know. And uh, I made my way through there and I didn't realize that um, on the extent of how Denver's been gentrified, the entire city of Boulder has been 100% gentrified, where there are no more local bars that I saw, no dive bars, no real local businesses that are strategically local independent companies, really. There might be a few, but it, it was kind of based on this this whole reliving LA idea because LA failed. And you know the city's been bankrupt six or seven times. So you have all these Californians that are living there and they're changing the dynamics of what it is to be someone from Boulder. And uh, so I went down to Boxcar Coffee Roasters. And, um, you know, I really like those coffee roasters where they, even like a Corvus, where, you know, they have their own parking. Hey, they're in downtown Denver, but they have their own freaking parking lot. You know, it's it's huge deal for those of us who are disabled or people, you know, bringing families and stuff like that. I mean, you can go fuck yourself if you're not at least going to pay for two um, parking spaces. So that's my opinion on that. Cause I drove around for about 15 minutes just to find parking space just to even go to box car. Um, but you know, when I went in the outside was, you know, highly pristine. They were inside of this, um, cured meats, um, type of place where it was the two sides of the business. So there was one side was the cured meat, cured meats and, and cheeses and breads and stuff. And the other side was the the boxcar coffee and they had where well, you came up you directly spoke with the barista which was amazing and he asked you, you know what you wanted there was a there was a, a, a list that was right there so if you knew what you wanted you could pick it up and you could look at it and see exactly what you wanted and uh all the coffees were on the side of you so as soon as you came in you know you could smell the different coffees that were right there right at your nose and you can kind of like holy crap i really like this one coffee give me this because i love that smell so where you have the there isn't a disconnect with um, the taste in your olfactory 
um, senses and what you're buying, you know, which is a huge deal because normally if, if you're someone who's really, really into coffee, you know that you probably should smell it before you try it um, to kind of get an idea of what you're, you're actually tasting. And they kind of got that down. That's, that's something I can really agree with. It's just right there. As soon as you get, you know, to the store, it's, you know, right at your face and you can just pick it up and, and look at it. And if you want it, you just buy it. And so I saw a, uh, a Costa Rica, um, that was there and it smelled, uh, I think it's from Finca is the name of the, the area of Costa Rica. And it was that smell that I'm really familiar with. And I was like, you know, I want this. And I didn't even really have to even look at the beans to know that these were the beans that I wanted to have, which I, I, you know, now I don't give any of the roasters a benefit of the doubt anymore. You've got to prove yourself worthy of, of selling quality coffee. And that means that you need to put it in, you know, some sort of receptacle that you can look at the beans and then see them and smell them and, and feel them before you even purchase them. Because, uh, I'm sorry, but you can't just go around burning your, burning good beans. Because even McDonald's is probably good beans. But they're burning it and creating a, a horrible problem. And, and Boxcar did the opposite of that. Boxcar allowed you to pick it up, you smell it, you look at it. Then you went directly and talked to the barista. He's working with the coffee. He knows exactly what he's doing. And it was... You know, the, the clientele was kind of pretentious. I mean, but... They weren't really there for coffee. They were, they were there to meet up with people and stuff like that. So they're doing like the... Um, the college, because the uh, UC University of Boulder, Colorado, or whatever the hell the name of the college is, a huge giant school there. Um, all of these kids are just going to school now, so they're meeting up with their families, and they're going to be going to school there. So it's more of that atmosphere and less of the hometown coffee shop atmosphere. But they honestly, they got everything right. I mean, anything that you could really want, you wanted espresso, you wanted pour overs, you you know. You wanted superb craft coffee, you can get that at Boxcar. And I don't know who the guys are that own it, but I'd love to meet them because I was really impressed. Um, the only thing? No parking. Uh, I thought it was kind of odd. But on the side of the coffee things, they had Ethiopias, they had two different Costa Ricas, they had one decaf, um, all bagged right there for you to pick up off the thing, smell them. And I had a Burundi, and the Burundi was just fabulous. Um, what I didn't, I thought they were just going to give me a cup. Um, it's something about presentation and this this concept of, of having coffee is, I can't put my hand on where they got it from, but it's important where, so they did a pour over and there was more pour over left than my cup. So on the side, they put like a creamer type of receptacle that put the coffee there and then put it on a, uh, a wood a tray small tray and then you just took that with your coffee and then you brought it to your table and you drank it i mean just presentation like something simple that i don't think i've ever been anywhere that does that i mean just something small that like makes a big difference to people and their coffee experience um that's what people need and because even if you're not pretentious about coffee but you want an experience you're gonna remember something small like that um, and I was really impressed. So if you guys would like to try Boxcar Coffee, you guys can go on their website. I will link it in the show notes. They have two locations. One location is in Boulder, and then the other one is in Denver. Um, and I think they're doing a lot of online sales, too. They probably have, like, a whole department, or at least two or three people doing it. So you can order their coffee online and get it sent to you. You know, and I challenge you to try it, because honestly, when it comes to presentation and how you're you're selling your coffee and the experience that you're giving your customers, they they know what the hell they're doing. If they're able to please me as the coffee snob, and then I talked to a lady who was just there to visit with her kid, and she just tried an espresso, and it was like an espresso, maybe with a little bit of water, or maybe just a couple of shots of espresso. But she couldn't describe what she liked, but she loved it. And she knew why she, she loved it, because it was the taste that she loved. She didn't need to know where it came from. She didn't know, need to know there was single origin. She didn't even know what single origin was. But she did know that good coffee existed, and that's what she was drinking. So, you coffee owners and people out there, and you want to get different types of people into your business, you got to go after them too. And it's about that, that connection with the barista. Instead of the barista just huddling over around the espresso machine 
the open bar aspect of you and the barista are right there face to face talking and discussing and screw the person behind you you have the ability to talk to your barista and and express to them what you like and what you don't like boxcar you guys are number two or three number three so huckleberry corvus and boxcar and boxcar is my number three coffee roaster in colorado that you have to go to or go on the website and buy their coffee because you will fucking enjoy it and love it thank you for checking out colorado coffee and cuisine please go on our facebook page and become friends with us start a conversation we need to have some more places to go to because other than me going to coffee roasters really i don't need out so i just like go and go to the meat market and go to the farmer's market and make food but um you guys should uh Tell me about your favorite restaurant in the Denver area. Do you have a dive bar that you like? Tell me about your dive bar. I'd love to go to it. Colorado Culture and Cuisine, out.